space of one month. My next guest has gone from questioning the Building Bridges Initiative's implementation strategy to seemingly embracing it and declaring the inevitability of the referendum. Why the change of heart and where does he fit in the political alliances that seem to be shaping up ahead of 2022? Now I'll be speaking right now to Bungoma Senator and Ford Kenya Party leader Moses Wetangula on the state of politics in the country and the war on corruption as well. Senator, welcome to Newsnight. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And of course, to our viewers, uh, we value your feedback. 2242 is the SMS line. The hashtag is Newsnight. And I want to start with some questions that really seem to be popping up, Senator. Yes. Uh, Kule, Chule Anthony is asking, is it true that Senator Wetangula received a call from State House to attend the Buhungu BBI meeting? And Roba, all the way from Moyale, this is via SMS, is asking, Honorable Wetangula seems to be under pressure to embrace the BBI. Okay. Can you respond that to is absolutely two? far from the truth. Mm -hmm. One, I went to Bohongo to attend the meeting because one, that is my region. Two, because I believe in BBI. Three, I believe there must be change in the country. And four, you must recall that at the launch of the BBI at Bomas, I was one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. And I supported the process with a caution that people must be given an opportunity to read the document, understand the document, interrogate the document, and see what steps we must take towards implementation. So to that extent, I have had no difficulty whatsoever in attending any of the BBI meetings because I believe in BBI. And yet a few I would days never have been in Bomas if I didn't if believe you didn't believe. It. And yet a few days before the Bohungu meeting, you said that that meeting is a cynical ploy. These are your exact words to divide our community. That and is, you, And you sounded like you wanted to have nothing to do with that meeting. And then you show up. And if you listen to me when I was there, mm -hmm. I said we should not use BBI that is meant to unite Kenyans, to divide Kenyans even more. And I cautioned that nobody should arrogate themselves an authority or power to arrange seats for people to sit on in the leadership structures. Okay. And, and that to, position remains. And I want to get to the content of your speeches there. I think what surprises Kenyans is, on one hand, there you are with Musalem Mudavadi speaking yes. against that meeting. That was, you know, you know beamed across the country. And then you show up. What changed between when you gave that speech together with Musalem Mudavadi yes. and the D-Day? What changed? As leaders, mm -hmm. we lead people. Mm -hmm. As leaders, we listen to people. And many, many of our supporters told us, this is home tough. This is home ground. There's an assembly in Kakamega. People are coming to talk about BBI. We saw you at Bomas talking about BBI, telling us how you supported it. Come and tell us much more about BBI. That's what framed your decision making. That informed our change of mind. Not a number call two. from the president. Number two, mm -hmm. when we went to Kakamega, you remember what I said, the centerpiece of BBI must be the people of Kenya, not leaders. So we listened to the call of the people of Kenya, mm -hmm. for whom we speak for whom we want things to be done. Okay. And we went and delivered our message. Uh, but you're still not answering yes. the question of one of our viewers. Did the president call you at any point to talk about the that? The end justifies the means. We so went to did. Kakamega so to did, speak did, to Kenyans. He did call I you. received no call from the president. And even if I did, it cannot be part of public discourse. Can it? In, in, the, in that you will not discuss it in this interview? Is that what or anywhere mean? else for that matter. Okay. Yes. Okay. Well, I, I still feel you haven't fully answered my question, but there were many, including Honorable Halwale, who believed you were headed elsewhere. You were headed to lead some sort of protest in Mumia for the ailing sugar factory, but instead you went for that rally. And he and his supporters felt disappointed and actually called for you to apologize for saying one thing and, and doing another. How do you respond to them? At tonight? no time, and your clips will bear me out, mm -hmm. at no time did I, Weta, or Mudavadi, tell anybody publicly or privately that we are going to Mumias. At no time did we get involved in the arrangement of the Mumias meeting. The only thing we had said at the funeral in the home of Museo Tiende was our reservation in the manner in which the BBI agenda was being driven. 
And that remains an issue for discussion because I have said, mm -hmm. and I want to repeat, we have a BBI report that is on the market. It has not been properly circulated. It has not reached as many Kenyans as it should be. People are being told go and download it from the website of this and that. Mama Mboga on a market at Shibuye or Chwele or Karatina has no capacity or ability to download a document. Print the document in English, in Swahili, if possible in our native languages, mm -hmm. and take to people to read and understand. Number two, when the document came out, I was on record and I've said it over and over, that there are several issues that need to be addressed. How do you implement this? First, give us an implementation framework. So you have no problem with the content of the document. You're more concerned with the implementation of it. Some of the contents are a bit shallow and need to be improved. And that's why I supported the president when he added on a list and group of experts to deepen the content mm -hmm. and gave the committee of use of Haji more time to improve on what they have done. Okay. That is informed by the fact that there were deficiencies in the document. If it was perfect, we wouldn't have gone that road. That notwithstanding, mm -hmm. whatever the deficiencies, the implementation matrix must include one, what are issues that can be implemented through mere policy changes? Mm -hmm. Like for example, the cabinet made a policy and changed 26th of December from Boxing Day to Tamadun Day. That is BBI implemented already. The other issues that need to be implemented through simple legislative processes in assemblies, in counties. Let me actually talk to you about one of those issues right now. We saw yes. you in Mombasa at the BBI yes. meeting there. Yes. One of the things that you are quoted as saying is that BBI is to cure Kenya of the malaise of electoral malpractice. Absolutely. And you've been speaking about that quite strongly. Yes. How is that solution captured in the report? that for you gives you hope that we're heading in the right direction. Let's speak about that particular Unfortunately, aspect of the report. Unfortunately, the report is very weak on the issue of electoral reforms. This country has gone through very difficult times because of questionable political outcomes out of elections. The integrity of elections has been an issue. The management of elections has been an issue. The integrity of the voters' role has been an issue. Interference by external forces in the electoral process has been an issue. And that is what brought us to near civil war in this country. In 2007, I was your foreign minister in 2008, and I was at the centerpiece of even bringing Kofi Annan, and President Kufuo, President Mukapa, President Kikwete, mm -hmm. and all these luminaries, Mama Michelle, to help Kenya come out of the mess. 2013, again, we went to the brink. 2017, same thing. Now, what brought President Uhuru Kenyatta and Royal Odinga to the handshake was because of those series of conflicts born out of elections. But today, as we're pursuing BBI, very few of my colleagues are talking about electoral integrity. And that concerns you? That concerns me what, immensely. What solutions do you because have? What are you putting on the table? I would want to see a situation where the management of our elections, right from issuance of identity cards, registration of voters, mm -hmm. maintenance of the voters' role, the uh, allocation of polling centers, allocation of electoral officials, and all these issues being managed properly without interference. More importantly, I would want to see a situation where when we go to elections, the management of our elections, and you can go and read Krigler report that was so intense and deep mm -hmm. in bringing out the mess in our electoral system, in pointing out the weak areas and areas that requires change. And yet it has seemingly never been implemented. Nobody talks about it. Today, we are very consumed about creating positions for prime minister, two deputies. That is what everybody is talking about. Uh, in Mombasa, at least, I had people talking about the TJRC report. Mm -hmm. It gave me a, a ray of hope. Because we have a lot of 
old baggage that we have carried through the years. So it, if we do not change, mm -hmm. and this is a moment that Kenyans have been afforded, that when we were bringing the constitution 2010, mm -hmm. we had two schools of thought. 80% good, 20% bad. So there was a school of... Petitia to Badilisha, exactly. Badilisha to Petitia. To Petitia. We've now come to the center. To Lipetisha, Hadoja Badlisha. What do we change now? We've seen the voice of Raila Odinga quite strongly on BBI matters. Have you shared your concerns with him? We talk. We talk all the time, what, yes. What, what does he say? Or have you shared it with the, you know, uh, the task force led by Senator? You uh, of Haji, Senator, first of all... Like maybe on this example of electoral reform, yes. where you still feel that the document does not quite capture... It is not strong enough on electoral reforms. Remember when they were collecting views, my party that I lead presented our views. We sent our SG, he gave a reasoned report from the party, mm -hmm. approved by all organs of the party. I personally appeared before the committee in Bungoma and gave views as a leader in the region, as the Senate of Bungoma. Again, I re represented the views of the party as well. Number three, when we were at KICC, the Speaker of the Senate selected a group of senators mm -hmm. led by me, and I appeared before this committee. So three. I appeared how many times? Three At times. three times. So you've shared as much and of your views. And I shared literally every strong views that I held about what needs to be done in okay. this country. Okay. And they know that in this country, elections are an issue. Inclusivity is an issue. Tribal tensions are an issue. Mm -hmm. Land grabbing is an issue. Mm -hmm. Neglect of regions in terms of sharing development activities and opportunities are an issue. Neglect of young people in this country is an issue. Okay. Neglect of all the people in this country is an issue. And I think we can and go on. Many others. We can, we can go, go on, on and for, on for and quite on. A long time. Yes. One of the big issues that also you know, was waded into in the report, but some still say has not been looked at fully, is the war on corruption. Yes. Now, this, uh, now uh, on the 31st of December 2019, you spoke about corruption yes. in the counties. Yes. You raised concerns about allegations of corruption at your in county. In my own county. In your own county. We have yes. that clip. Yes. And if we are ready, we can actually just play a little bit of what you had to say on that. Mm -hmm. Here we go. There are cases that are under investigations in, in Bungoma. We have questions that don't have answers. To encourage you, the media, that uh, the more you dig out and expose some of these things to the public, the better it helps in uh, warning, naming, and shaming those who are participating in vices of corruption. So you sounded very concerned about allegations of corruption, uh, maybe yes. raised by an auditor's report or something of the sort in your county. Yes. Again, does the same document, you know, allay your fears that corruption will be fought with fully if implemented? Some of the suggestions in this country in document actually we have an oversupply of institutions of governance that would be fighting corruption we have oversight groupings count assemblies national assembly uh, senate we have institutions of governance including but not limited to eacc dpp dci the judiciary the auditor general the control of budget and all this Unfortunately, many of these institutions are not sufficiently empowered and are not strong enough to deal with the issues. Mm -hmm. I would want to see a situation where this is addressed. Uh, come to what you just played. Uh, I, the reason I spoke the way I did about my county is that I'm aware that my county, like many other counties, you saw this afternoon in the Senate, I don't want to delve into that, but we are dealing with issues of Kembu. I know for a fact that my county is also under scrutiny and the radar of ESCC on matters of probity, matters of corruption, and the lack of proper accountability in the use of resources. Mm -hmm. The fact that I'm the senator for Bungoma and I'm a leader of the party that has produced the governor of Bungoma should never be an injunction to speak about things that do not make sense in society. Okay. And, and I'll continue doing that. And you will continue doing that. And it's yes. interesting you say that because even as you speak so strongly against corruption, 
there are those who say that there have been corruption scandals that you yourself have been adversely linked to. For example, yes. last year your name came up in an alleged fake gold scandal that yes. had tentacles in the UAE, the Democratic Republic of Congo and other countries. What was that about, Senator? I say it and I want to repeat again. I am not a gold trader. I've never traded in gold and it's a known issue in my life and it has no bearing whatsoever. So you I do. know nothing about a, a, I have a, a nothing phone to call do with that it. had a voice that sounded quite similar I have nothing to, to you as I must say, Senator. And uh, it's an issue that is neither academic nor realistic and I don't want to talk about it because it doesn't make sense to me. So that was not your voice I in have the never traded in call. gold. You I'm never not a in trader. Gold? I'm a lawyer by profession. I'm a professional politician now and I do my things the right way. So tell me this. Why did the Daily Nation allege that the DCI was looking for you to get clarification on what you were doing in December, in September 2018 over the same matter and they told this to a, a leading newspaper and, and they printed that. Why then was the In your wildest brought? imagination, do you think if the DCI was looking for me, couldn't find me? I'm an open page. Everybody knows where I live in Bungoma. Everybody knows where I live in Nairobi. Everybody knows where my law firm is in Nairobi. Everybody knows where my office is at KICC. Everybody knows where the Senate is. So the DCI was misquoted right? or it was... The DCI never said he was looking for me. Okay. I don't remember. And, so and uh, I have always said in matters of probity, mm -hmm. forget about what you're asking me. When I was Minister for Foreign Affairs, mm -hmm. I was framed into a so-called scandal about a purchase of our members in Tokyo. Tune of about 1.4 billion yes. Kenya shillings. And I and said, you stepped down over the and same And I matter. walked to my president Kibaki and told him, Mr. President, I have a name, I have a family, I have a profession, I have a future. I cannot allow my name to be dragged and dropped in mud the way it is. Allow me to step aside, investigate me with every agency available. Mm. They investigated with interministerial committees, with the ESCC, mm -hmm. with whatever body you and may call. Yes. And it was finished, and President Kibaki asked me to come back to the office and, I and want carry to, on with my work. I actually wanted to ask you about that. Yes. So, about the phone call, you say it was not your voice. Which phone call? The phone call that was leaked, that was played in the media. Yes. last year around me that was not your voice There's talking about a transaction so many so many people the who mimic others the president yes. the prime minister uh, former prime minister Raila Odinga uh, uh, interior CS Dr. Machai. you mean I'm that careless to throw the president's name all over surely so it was I a, did it. an imitator how many people are imitated you have even clowns in your studios who mimic anybody and everybody mm -hmm. don't you Okay. Yes. So, no clarity on this matter at all. That was not you in Dubai in September involved in this deal. That was not you on the phone call. I that was am not you not being looked for by the DCI. I am a gold trader. Mm -hmm. And if the DCI wants to talk to me, I'm available. I will never wait to be looked for. Okay. I'm a law abiding citizen, my friend. Mm -hmm. I'm a lawyer mm -hmm. of no mean standing. I was your father and your mother's classmates. Uh, so, sorry to. To say yes, this, I was about but, to say that we're, I'm here parents, representing Kenyans for this particular role. Your role. parents were my classmates, and I studied my law properly, and I know what law means, and what okay. the responsibility of a responsible citizen is. Because on one hand, Senator, you have made it clear that you, you, your ambitions are to the highest level. In fact, yes. you've told people, don't, don't look at me as just a senatorial sort of candidate in the future, gubernatorial. I want even to be a presidential candidate. It's not wanting to be a presidential you candidate. You are determined. I am a presidential candidate. You are a presidential candidate. My which party means has already given up. me the opportunity yes. to carry that flag. Are you ready to stand up to the scrutiny of that seat? Absolutely. And which is why I bring up these questions for you. Absolutely. That's why I have told you even about the Tokyo so-called Tokyo scandal, which Kenyans keep on throwing at me. In the Tokyo scandal, you yes. said the yes. long and short of it is ministers don't deal with transactions. We deal with what we are given. Ministers only deal with policies. In the old constitution. In the old constitution. In the current constitution, ministers have added responsibility beyond policy. Now, most governors say that they don't sign checks. They don't deal with transactions. 
they deal with the policy direction that the county is moving I towards. I will tell you this. And you are saying, you said yes. in a rally, I think on the 2nd of January 2020, that there is corruption in the counties. Every yes. governor should carry their cross. And yet you had a seat almost similar to that years ago, and you, you blamed it on others in your ministry. In the constitution before 2010, if you revisit and read it, ministers were only giving policy guidelines to the running of the ministry. The CEO of the ministry was the PS. Mm -hmm. That position changed with the new constitution. Ministers are responsible and accountable to parliament, to the appointing authority, and they carry executive responsibility for what they do. Governors are the CEOs of counties and they carry the responsibility of the management of the counties. Even though many of them say they don't sign the checks directly. Signing a check leaf is not, is not the beginning and the end of responsibility. It is just part of responsibility. Tell me this because... There are very many people who don't yeah. sign any check leaves but get involved in many transactions. Yes. Yes. Tell me this is my last question because I know I'm due for a break. In that case, why is your name then linked to not just one, two, three of these can? What, what is it about Honorable Moses Wetangula that uh, over the last five, six, seven years has yes. found his name? I mean, I'm, I'm also talking about a bribery allegation back in 2012 uh, in a story done by an uh, international media house as well. Why? Wh which one is that? The BAT bribery allegation. I'm in court. I have sued them. They have no defense. They maligned me. I gave material to court. They even say that they bought a ticket for me and my wife to go to London. I showed the court. Mm -hmm that the ministry that I headed bought the ticket. I was part of the presidential uh, team to London. People I lived with in the same hotel, like the senator for Embu, Peter Nwiga, are there to testify. So ask those who dragged my name into this. The questions that That's I'm how many enigmatic today. people, when you are enigmatic, some people just drag your name in everything. <laughs> and I'm not the only one whose name is dragged into mud by Look at the Kenyan leaders. People are throwing things all over. So and so did this, so and so did this. The ultimate measure of you as a leader mm -hmm. is one, your conscience. Is your conscience. Your conscience. Can I do this, Senator? Like I did say, yes. before you go to that, I did say to President Kibaki, and he's my living witness, mm -hmm. Mr. President, if I find or you find that I have any culpability, I'll not be taken to court. Senator, I'll I will walk to, to court. I want to pause you there because we're due for a break. I have a few SMSs I want to read. Give you a chance to give yes. you your final comment. Let's do that immediately after the break. You're watching Newsnight. What's your feedback? 2242 is the SMS line. The hashtag is Newsnight. I'll pose two or three questions to the Senator as we wrap up the interview on the other side of the break. Stay with us.